Hello students, today our topic of discussion is the impact of COVID pandemic on Indian service sector and the growing importance of e-governance and digital development in India. After this, service sector emerged as the dominant sector as the demand for services were created by both the consumers and the growing industries. Thus, service sector becomes the predominant sector in the economy in terms of the contribution to the GDP. So, there was an initial dominance of agricultural sector followed by the dominance of manufacturing sector. Afterwards, with the changing needs, requirements and structure of the economy, service sector emerged as the most significant and important sector of the economy. However, in India, service sector development took place just after the development of agricultural sector because the growth rate in the manufacturing sector was very sluggish. In India, service sector revolution occurred in the 90s just after the adoption of the new economic policy in 1991. As per the classification made by national accounts, the service sector in India includes the following subsectors like transport, storage and communication and the services related to broadcasting, the financial services like banking and insurance, real estate, ownership of dwelling and professional services, transport, tourism, trade, public administration, defense, and other services. Now, in order to accommodate the recommendations of WTO and RBI, now construction activities are also included as a service sector activity. Now, from the 80s, actually, all the world is experiencing the service sector growth. India was not an exception. However, the service sector revolution in India started a bit late in the mid-90s, though service sector revolution was a worldwide phenomenon from the 80s. From the mid-90s, service sector in India has recorded an impressive growth rate. After observing this impressive performance of the service sector in India, many economists opined that service sector is actually acting as the engine of growth for Indian economy. However, unfortunately, at the beginning of 2020, the whole world observed the outbreak of COVID pandemic. All the nations suffered a lot initially However, the things grown brighter after some months. Due to this COVID pandemic, the GDP in India has suffered a huge setback. It was decreased drastically. And one of the reasons for that, as pointed out by the economist, is the decreased contribution of service sector to the GDP or the gross value added. In fact, in 2019-20, the service sector growth in India and contribution to GDP was 55.3%. However, in 2020-21, it was decreased to 53.9%. So, it was a serious setback for the service sector as well as for the overall growth of the economy. After coming back to the normalcy, the service sector again started to perform very well, which is indicative of that is that service sector weathered the storm of this COVID pandemic very well in the long run. First, we will come to the issue of transport. We know India is an overpopulated country and the public transport like buses and trains were always overcrowded. Due to the outbreak of this COVID pandemic, 
government has to impose lockdowns and severe restrictions in order to prevent the spread of this contagious disease. So, it, will, it actually created enormous trouble to the general public. But the migrant laborers were the most sufferers. They had to travel miles after miles from their workplace to the native land. Government has realized this fact and also accommodate themselves with many facilities. But due to lack of information or as well as some structural difficulties, often these facilities are found to be insufficient. However, coming back to normalcy, the buses trains were started operation with 50% capacity and finally in recent times it is operating at their fullest extent. But during the COVID pandemic, airline sector suffered a lot. Many flights were cancelled and there were huge job losses in the aviation sector, specifically in the private sectors. After that, when again the normalcy is restored, the airlines started operating with 50% capacity again, but still there was a huge loss in the overall airlines industry, which actually hampered the growth of this sector. If we think about and compare about the records of November 2019 and November 2020, then we can see that there was a clear cut 51% reduction in the number of passengers in these two specifically mentioned time periods. In this context, we can say that the auto sector or automobile sector has developed a lot after the COVID pandemic. This is, seems to be surprising because initially there was a very much setback, but afterwards many middle income and high income groups were opting for new cars and used cars to protect themselves from the public transport. So both the market for new cars and also the market for used cars developed in the November 2020. Now we are coming back to the communication sector of service sector, which is also affected by the COVID pandemic. In fact, this sector experienced a significant changes. We know that physical closure of institutions, offices in that pandemic period and all have to switch over to online mode instead of offline mode. Actually, the network service producers, providers are also giving different regular packages earlier. But due to the outbreak of COVID pandemic, they started to customize their packages. Many work from home packages were created, which catered the needs of the professionals. Moreover, it should be noteworthy that for virtual meetings and virtual interactions between employees and the employers, teachers and students, many online platforms were created. Just like Microsoft launched Teams, Google launched uh, Meets, Duos, and there was also the existence of Zoom. All these online platforms has benefited the teachers, students, officers, employees, and employers. And more surprisingly, in the recent times, these platforms are very much prominent and operative. So in this sector, COVID-19 has provided enormous opportunities and benefits also. Despite the occurrence of COVID-19 pandemic, IT sector has done impressively well. This is due to the favorable government policy 
skilled professionals in ITS BPO sector, inflow of foreign direct investment. All these factors were responsible for the IT sector growth. Even in the time of pandemic, IT sector grew at 2.3% per annum and the IT services revenue grew up to 194 US million dollars. So this was a very impressive performance of IT sector even during the COVID pandemic. Only the problem faced by this sector is the amendment in the H-1B visa. Now, we will just discuss another thing that is the impact of COVID-19 on e-commerce. Now, e-commerce actually implies the selling and buying of goods and services in online mode. After COVID pandemic, this sector actually flourished a lot. They are previously catering the different needs of the people in online mode. But after the COVID pandemic, when there were lockdown, these companies have started to provide the basic goods which are essential for day-to-day -day life. And this is still continuing. So e-commerce sector has developed and flourished a lot due to the COVID pandemic. The government always tried to promote the digital transactions as it is time-saving and it also involves efficiency. Even after the demonetization drive in 2016, people were reluctant to choose the digital mode of payment. However, the COVID-19 has created enormous scope for the digital payment mechanism. Now people are very much interested to opt for the digital mode in order to avoid long lines before the banks which are actually operating with lesser staff. And it is also very cumbersome and risky for the general public to stand in the long lines for a long period since the disease is very much contagious. So the people now were keen to uh, opt for the digital mode of mechanism. Now, another thing which is very important to note is the impact of COVID-19 on education sector. Actually, education sector has experienced a revolutionary change due to COVID pandemic. As the schools, colleges, universities were physically closed since March 2020, the officials and the officers of the companies and also the educators of different institutions have to switch over to online mode. Initially, it was cumbersome for both the teachers and students, but gradually they were accustomed with the system. Unfortunately, this online education mode has created a severe digital divide among the students. Many students who reside in the remote areas and are poor were unable to take the benefits of the online education system due to their lack of accessibility and affordability. And hence, they remained outside the domain of mainstream education. This is hampering the inclusive development, which always tells about the inclusion of every sector of the economy. Since this is a serious problem, government has taken these problems very seriously. They have taken different measures to remove the digital divide. Actually, massive open online courses, MOOC, was there since 2007, but it was not that effective. So the government has introduced SIAM in 2017 in order to spread the interest in the online mode of education. During the COVID pandemic, SIAM platform has worked beautifully. SIAM has the objective of ensuring 
three cardinals of the education system that is that access equity and quality it is a on, it's an online platform which provided access to the knowledge to anyone everyone and everywhere so this is a clear path towards the inclusive development apart from this government has created a national digital library from which in which actually the certificates received from the siam courses after completing each year the certificates can be stored there now due to various reasons the students often discontinue education but as per the new education policy if the students can complete just one year he will obtain a certificate which can be stored in the national digital library so after first year second year third year and fourth year the students get diploma degrees and also the certificates which can be stored in a secure manner in the digi locker system so we are hopeful that this mooc under the siam platform will create a revolutionary change in the indian education sector and this was initiated mainly in the covid pandemic situation now we are moving to the healthcare sector which was also affected in the covid pandemic situation we know that the healthcare professionals did splendid job in the time of pandemic they have served in the hospitals and even attended house calls for the elderly people but covid pandemic had made us realize about the poor health infrastructure of the country there was a dearth of iccu beds oxygen cylinders proper staff etc now with the outbreak of the pandemic government also realized the need for a sound strong infrastructure in this health sector so in that way covid pandemic had paved a path for the development and it actually stated that government and the country should focus on the infrastructural building apart from that uh, there were enormous job opportunities created for the semi and moderately skilled healthcare professionals because they can be absorbed in the healthcare sector as there was dearth of the healthcare professionals which was felt during the covid pandemic now insurance sector is a very important sector of service sector now after the covid pandemic the life insurance and the general insurance including health insurance has felt covid 19 pandemic as one of the main factors in the policy so they have introduced various policies which covers the illness and mortality due to the covid pandemic this was a huge relief for the people who are suffering from covid because the private hospitals were charging a huge amount of money for the treatment of covid so once these policies were created people were actually very much keen to adopt these policies so there was a growth in the insurance sector which was observed in the covid pandemic situation now another thing that we should mention is the tourism sector hotel and restaurant since there is no possibility of digitalization in the tourism sector the hotels restaurants homestays in the tourist spots suffered a lot there were immense job losses many persons were jobless and hotels and restaurants were shut down even in the cities the hotels and restaurants were closed due to government restrictions and due to lack of customers 
So the hotels and restaurants in the cities and in the suburbs started online delivery of the food which was given in a contactless, safe and secure manner. Even after coming back to the normalcy, this trend is continuing. So actually COVID-19 has created some scope, new scope and newer avenues in the service sector. Now we will discuss the impact of COVID pandemic on the entertainment and recreational activities. Due to COVID pandemic, all the gymnasiums, amusement parks, movie theaters, theater halls remain closed. So it was a huge setback for this particular sector. But this actually created a huge scope for the OTT platforms because many big budget films are started to release in this particular platform. So this is still continuing. So COVID pandemic is not only creating challenges in the sector, but also it provided many opportunities. E-governance implies the usage of information and communication technology by the government to ensure efficiency and inclusiveness. These e-governance programs actually reached the masses very well and it also informed about all the developmental schemes taken by the government through online mode. So among the e-governance projects, there are many important projects, but before that, we should mention that the e-governance projects or the intention to bring e-governance into action, National Informatics Center was the first step. It was established in 1977. After that, the usage of optical fiber by the Rajiv Gandhi government was uh, termed as the stepping stone for the ICT development in the country. Finally, in 2014, with the introduction of Digital India scheme, the e-governance projects were very, very important. It not only increased the efficiency in the system, but also reduced the dominance of middlemen. So, e-governance projects were very important these days. Among them, other enabled payment services were important, where financial inclusion was ensured and online banking transactions can be made. There was Umang, which was a very important part of the digital development and digital India scheme. It ensured the single access to all the government schemes. There was Veeam, Bharat Interface for Money. This scheme uses UPI for online transaction. There was Inam, which was very much relevant in the COVID-19 period regarding the agricultural sector and it was beneficial for the, for the farmers to get all the information regarding agricultural products when the physical closure was prominent. So these are the important e-governance projects which the government of India has undertook these days which were very much relevant in the COVID pandemic. Thus from this analysis uh, we can understand the digital developments in the COVID pandemic period. Despite the negative effects, the banking and digital transaction has shown an enormously well performance in this particular period. In the uh, period of pandemic, the digital transactions were almost doubled between 2020 to 2022. It was a very impressive feature towards a cashless, faceless and paperless economy, which was one of the important objectives of the government. So not only the banking sector and the insurance sector, there was a revolutionary change experienced in the educational sector also, which we have mentioned earlier. So among these digital development programs, we have already mentioned the e-governance projects, which were extremely essential in the COVID pandemic. So there were a new plethora of the new schemes observed in the time of pandemic, which were associated with the Digital India movement.